I don't even know how to analyze Group F anymore. <laughs> Seriously, like, I don't. I really don't. Do you? If you know how to analyze Group F, I need you to help me out here, man, because, listen, it is truly the group of death because what we saw today, we I don't think anyone was actually expecting this. Match they won, Portugal. They got the better of Hungary, 3-0. Took them late. France got the better of Germany. And we're like, okay, it seems like things are going to be a bit normal because eh, you expect France to beat Germany the way they are right now. But God damn it, match day two, you didn't have to basically throw a wrench at the whole thing and have the thing all out of whack. But this is what we love. This is what we want. Because on match day three, where all teams are still alive, we have a great showdown next week. And I'm looking forward to it. Portugal versus France. Repeat of the 2016 final. Where if Portugal lose this game, after losing so horribly to Germany today, 4-2 they could be out they could be out because this 4-2 loss could mess up their their goal difference it doesn't do well for their goal difference they need they need a result against they, they need a result against France a draw would do a win would be even better but Portugal cannot repeat this performance that I just saw against Germany. They cannot repeat this. I thought it was all going to be Portugal today. I know Germany started the game well. Really, really spirited. And they even scored early, but the goal was chalked off. Offside. And then Portugal, they end up scoring first against the runner play. Totally against the runner play. Brilliant ball by Bernardo Silva and Diego Jota. Setting up Ronaldo for the tap, 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 tap in. Thank you very much, sweetie. 1-0 to Portugal. And I'm like, okay. The Germans are like going to lose back-to-back -back games and basically get knocked out of the tournament. But no, 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 no. No, no, no. Says Don Penn. Listen. They had other thoughts. You got to give it to this guy. Go sense, man. Robin, go sense. He had Nelson Semedo in his pockets. If João Cancelo wasn't out of the tournament, this guy Semedo would have never been playing. Or maybe who knows. But this guy Semedo is trash, I'm telling you. This guy is trash. He went from Barcelona to Wolves and he did absolutely nothing in the Premier League last season. I don't know how he got into this team. Please explain it how he got into the team. Nelson Semedo is trash. Because go sense, listen, I kid you not. All four of the goals, all four, go sense was involved. The own goal, brilliant cross by go sense. Ruben Diaz inadvertently tapped it in. First, it was given as a Kai Havertz goal, but on the replay, you could see that it was Ruben Diaz. Germany level. And then the other own goal where it was a it was a ball over from Gosens. And I think that was Kimmich who did so well to keep that ball in. It just showed the determination from the Germans today, man. Because it was desperation stuff. They had to win this game. They had to win it, and to win it against the whole the holders, that is a big achievement. That is a big achievement. You gotta give it to the Germans here for actually coming up with this win with their backs against the wall. But that other own goal there scored by Rafa Guerrero. But Gosens is the one who put everything in a spot of bother. Gosens. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> What a player, man. What a player. What a rise. What a rise. A few years ago, nobody knew who, who Gosens was. But 2-1 at halftime and Portugal looked reeling, but they were still in the game. They came out in the second half and 
it was business as usual for Germany. Havertz scored, and then Gosens got into the act. Nelson Semedo, where art thou? Nowhere to be found. Gosens with the header. Brilliant cross by, by Joshua Kimmich. Listen, it was a much, much, much improved performance by Germany. Not that they played bad in the game against France where they only lost to an own goal. But this, this performance, they showed more intent in the final third. And also helped by, you know, the very inept defensive showing by Portugal, of course. And it, and it was a shocker by Portugal because how do you have Pepe? I know he's up there in age, but he's still quality. And Ruben Diaz, who won Premier League player of the season in the back there. And you get four put past you. It has to be the players around them. You see what I'm saying? It has to be Nelson Semedo and Rafa Guerrero. It got to be them. It got to be them. And I don't understand how you're playing two defensive midfielders in Danilo Pereira and William Carvalho. And your defense is getting overrun like this. It doesn't make no sense. It really doesn't make no sense. It makes go sense, but it doesn't make no sense. Seriously. So I think Portugal are very, very vulnerable down the wings. See, down the flanks, they're very vulnerable. Because if you really look at how they set up, guys, they set up very, very well in the middle of the field with those two players I just called. But down the wings, horrible, man. Horrible. If you can't go through them, you got to go around them. And that's what Germany did. And they bagged four. Portugal were able to score a second through... Diego Jota, helped by Cristiano Ronaldo, keeping that ball in play. And I think when Renato Sanchez came on, he did add some impetus to Portugal's attack, like he did in the first game. And he did hit the post. What a shot, man. If that had went in, that would have been simply, simply mag magnifico. I wanted to say magnificent, but I think mag magnifico sounds a little bit better. But Portugal, were, they were all played. They were outplayed, thoroughly, thoroughly outplayed. And I think the Portuguese players just had to take it on the chin. And they, 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 they I don't think they're going to beat themselves up about this. But I think they have to worry. They got to worry. Because this was a very, I, I don't want to call it complete, but it was an almost complete performance by this German team. I think if they didn't let in those two goals, it would have been a complete performance. 4 0, yeah, that would have been a, a complete performance. But nevertheless, it's a thrashing. It's a thrashing. With some help from Portugal, as I said. Not very good in defense today with those own goals as, as, as well, man. You know, so I expected better from Portugal and, and, I, and I didn't see it. And I'm, and I'm very, very worried for this team right now. They left it very late against Hungary. And they got smashed up by, by, by Germany. And... It's hard to, it's very, very difficult to predict the game between Portugal and France. I think that game is coming up next Wednesday. Very difficult to predict that game because of what we saw from France today against Hungary where that game draw, drew 1-1. And then it's very difficult to predict the German game where we may think that Germany may go and destroy Hungary, but Hungary has put out some stellar performances so far. So, Group F, man, truly the group of death, or is it the group of life? It can't be the group of life, if you want to look at, it, look at it from that perspective. But, look, man, we were entertained, thoroughly, thoroughly entertained. Oh, you're not entertained? Don't be ungrateful, because we were entertained. Six goal thriller here between two top-notch teams. One that has been going through a, a transitional period. One that has been struggling, one with an outgoing manager. And, you know, a manager who has taken the team to, 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 the, to the heights, the pinnacle. Can't take them no further. And now the only way to go is down. But can he leave with a final hurrah? Because this German team are looking like they, they, they want to do something special at the tournament. And who knows? Who knows, man? This game is so unpredictable. Very, very unpredictable. And as I said, we never know. The group is still open. 
you could see a situation where Germany does not go through. Or you could see a situation where Portugal does not go through. France are in the best position right now because they haven't lost the game. But Portugal and Germany and then Hungary have lost games. So Group F, man, got to love it. Got to love it. It's my favorite group right about now. Got to love it. And I really like how the Euros are, are, are progressing. A lot of the groups are shaping up very well. You know what I mean? The final match days are very, very, very... Um, you know, we, 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 the, the groups are still open, with the exception of Netherlands, who have already topped their group. So you got to give it to them. Belgium and Italy have already gone through, but they, it, they're not sure if they're going to go through as first or second, but they, they, they have already gone through, basically. So look, man, look, 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 just a quick reaction. Adrenaline still flowing from, from this very exciting game. I want you guys to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll be live later to touch on this. We have um, a game between Poland and Spain coming up about in an hour's time. I'm heading home from work. It's been a long day. I appreciate you watching this video. So if you got to the end, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. If you're new, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down below. And until next time, from your boy Dominic Rich, peace out. Rich. Squad. Peace.